So my question to you is this. A new study from the CDC found that uh, the coronavirus was perhaps already spreading in the U.S. last Christmas, uh, weeks before the first cases were reported in China. Is it possible this was spreading earlier than that? And does that change what we know about the virus? Yeah, so it's one study. Uh, I haven't taken, put a, I don't put a lot of stock in it, to be perfectly honest. I think uh, there's some problems with the study. I, I do think that the virus uh, probably did arrive in the United States uh, in early January or maybe late December. Uh, I don't know if this study really proves that, but I do think it was probably circulating a little bit early, and and uh, and we probably didn't know about it in the in the very earliest days when it was here. Right, Sunny. Um, Dr. Ja, um, I, I'm just. I, I want to quickly just ask you this: the pen, uh, What can you say to Americans like myself who may be a, a bit skeptical about the safety of these vaccines, given how quickly they came together? I mean, my understanding is that Moderna's vaccine was designed in just two days, for example. I mean, when the vaccine does become available, you know, will there be people that feel confident enough to, uh, to take it? Yeah, no, I totally get it, right? I understand people's hesitation, and, and this has gone fast. I guess I would say a few things to folks. First is that we haven't cut any corners. Like, all of the steps that go into testing the safety of a vaccine all of those tests are being done. Now, some of them we did in parallel. So sometimes you do an animal study first, then you go to human trials. We did some of these things at the same time, but we did every step. Uh, second is we got to look at the full set of data, but the data so far really do look like the vaccines are pretty safe. And I guess the biggest thing I would say is, you know, when it's my turn, I plan to get vaccinated. I plan to get my family vaccinated. I plan to get my elderly parents vaccinated. Uh, I think these vaccines but, you know, they've been done with really large clinical trials and they look pretty safe. Again, I do want to look at the final set of data, um, but I'm feeling pretty confident that uh, uh, that they're going to be safe and effective. And we've got to talk to people honestly and, and openly and you know, tell them what we know and don't know and, and, and not hype it. And so that's what we're going to try to do, I think. Many cities in the U.S. have kept bars and restaurants open, even as they've closed their schools. Now, New York City just reversed course and will be reopening some public schools for in-person learning after the backlash they received for closing them. Now, you've admitted that your thoughts on schools staying open have evolved with the data. What's your take on this now, and are schools safe for kids? Yeah, you know, uh, over the summer, I was pretty cautious and, and really felt like we needed more information and data before we could open all of them up, especially in places with a lot of spread. Right now, we've had a lot of schools open uh, in the U.S., uh, in Western Europe. And what we're seeing pretty consistently is that schools are not a source of spread. There's not a lot of spread happening in schools, especially in K through 8. And so I, I think it's become pretty clear to all of us in public health uh, that it is safe to open schools. Now, you got to be careful, right? You got to have kids wearing masks. You got to have a little bit of social distancing, some amount of ventilation in the rooms. So, if we do all of those things, I think it is not only doable, I think it's essential that we open up schools. Dr. D, you got to come back. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not enough time with you right now. So, you have to come back and see us again, okay? I, I'd be delighted. It, Thank you. Great conversation, great information. Thank you.